Okay, so we want to present you the Agora voting system. It's uh, another software voting tool. And it offers uh, encryption, and it offers also verification and notification of users. Uh, I'm going to show you some screenshots. So, for example, this is the web tool that can be used in the, in the, web, in the, in the internet website. And, well, these are a couple of encryptions now. And I wanted to explain you first the story of the project to, so that you can see how the community was born and how it grew. It, grew. it was born here in the, in the internet party of the, that does the direct democracy. It's a Spanish party that was born with the central idea of using direct democracy to, to in the parliament so that it, they got people elected, these people that got elected would use uh, direct democracy and so that they would vote directly what the people requested them to do. And then well, they realized they had a need for a tool uh, to do that. And besides, the problem was that uh, in, any, in any one parliament they, there are about 5,000 votations per year. So that's uh, not feasible so that everyone can vote 5,000 times. So then the need of the liquid democracy, which uh, I'm sure you all know about, that uh, you delegate to someone else, and this someone else either votes directly or delegates in someone else, so that you get a complete chain at the end, so that everyone is represented in the votation, but it doesn't have to participate continuously. And for that purpose, they started developing this Agora vote voting tool that started in 2011. No, the party is from 2009, and they started with the first release of Agora voting was in 2011. And the thing that happened is that the September, river. September 2012. September 2012 was the first release. And uh, then they realized that uh, it was, would be a good idea to separate both projects, uh, separate the, the tool from the party which made it easier so that the tool could evolve by itself and could be used in, in other parties and, and in other social groups or, um, or whatever. So, um, the, both the philosophy both of the direct democracy party, which is called internet party, and both the free software community and so, is that everyone can use uh, the, the program or the concept and that made it possible, for example, that smaller parties uh, that also had this direct democracy perspective could use the tool and uh, didn't have any difficulties. So we could help them install the tool. And for example, this is a Paco. Uh, it's a small party from from Valencia. They're from a little town called Aguila. That five people gather to they decide to mount a party in this basic idea of uh, the elected members will always use. Uh, We'll always use the direct democracy, not liquid, through liquid democracy. And it was uh, this is used in the web, in the website. But uh, there were people that could make installations of the software themselves. So because it's a GitHub project, so anyone can install it and anyone can use it. And that's how it started to be used by the pilot party from Madrid. It also happens that uh, the main programmer of the tool is both from this party and uh, well, actually we both are both from this party and from the pilot party from Madrid. So we also, uh, pilot party from Madrid did an installation of the tool and it was also installed in the green party from, from Madrid. So in a very uh, reduced environment, in a reduced community for 20, 30, 40 users, that we have tested the tool for, with uh, direct demo, uh, with uh, liquid democracy but in small groups and then somehow the project got stagnated because of um, the programmers requested a European grant so that Europe would uh, we pay to develop the tool but it didn't come through and it was very disappointing because they, they had to write a 2,200 pages report to request the money and it didn't work out. So it got stagnated and um, we were worried that it wouldn't go any further. In, the, in this first stage, the tool was very basic, was, uh, was a variation of Helios that included the users and, uh, and it, it, just, it followed the encryption and so on. And then, the next one. Yeah. this is uh, Eduardo, uh, he is the main programmer, you could say he has done 90% of the program. 
And that's, uh, that here is um, a member of the Spanish parliament, called uh, Baldoví. And this girl besides is from the Green Party. The Green Party and Baldoví, Baldoví is a nationalist from Valencia. That they, they are both together have a parliamentary in the Spanish parliament, that is Baldoví. And uh, as you know, uh, many parties are trying are embracing the direct democracy, right? They, they consider people like it, where people realize that it could be a great idea. And for example, the Green Party in Spain also are talking about we are going to, we're going to use more direct democracy, more transparency, etc., etc. Uh, in this case, this uh, parliamentarian came to Madrid. He gave, me, gave an interview where he said, "Okay, come here, give me your suggestions." So then Eduardo came there and said, why don't you use your, your seat in the parliament to practice direct democracy? And so he did. He accepted the challenge. And then there was a huge milestone for the value, for the Agora voting project that he will uh, explain later as a case study of what went right and what went wrong. But that's the, that's, the main, that's the main point. So we did the voting. Uh, this is an image, uh, my preferred image from all that milestone in which this is the, uh, his parliamentary seat where he's voting according to what uh, people talking to vote uh, through internet. In this first voting, what we got is authentication. Uh, there are many problems and he will develop about that, but uh, we wanted to know how, who can vote, uh, how, can, how, can, how can we authenticate the users, those are, those are the issues that we face when you go into a real situation, no? Okay, but who's gonna vote? Who's gonna control who votes and how do we control that? No one votes twice or so. And in this case, uh, we, uh, we, made, we used the database from one side, the database of, the, of both parties, which was around 15,000 15, users. And uh, from one side, so these people were already authenticated and that allowed them to vote directly. The, the, that meant if you were in the database of these parties, they already had checked your identity, so that you could vote. And apart from that, we established the, the vote by uh, a certificate usually issued by the Spanish Treasury to pay taxes, which is usually used, and that's why people have it, because it's uh, compulsory. So if you want to pay taxes online, you use this certificate to, to prove your identity. And that's one tool we use to, to authenticate yourself, uh, yourself automatically. Uh, pe people asked us to use the, this chip here, that supposedly if you have a, if you have a tool that's Harmony from Spain, if you have a, a, this chip, uh, many people think that it's useful, that it, it's, it's almost uh, useless. Uh, because, for example, the, this, the certificate in that chip uh, expires, expires before the, the ID, ID, ID card expires, so it makes it useless if you have the chip and you cannot use it. So we used it in, by the means of you could scan the, in your, you could scan or take a photo of your, of your ID, uh, email, email it as an attachment and we would use that to authenticate uh, your identity manually. These are the three, three processes we used, and this was the, one of the first, we, we shall say, advancement in the tool, no? that it was now able to authenticate users. Uh, the experience well, was, uh, we could say, he will explain that further, uh, of those 15,000, it was open to all the public. Finally, 2,200 people voted, which, uh, well, we rationalized later, but at first it was a bit disappointing, the number of voters. And, um, and it gave uh, the opportunity to repeat the experiment. So he was satisfied with it, and we did it again. Program, which, uh, which allowed the project to grow further, this is a hackathon we organized uh, between the both uh, Baldovic projects, Congreso Transparente was called, Transparent Congress. And the, the, that gave the illusion and motivation to the group to continue developing the, the tool. And for this second, second instance of the Valdovic project, we, used, uh, we, used, we were able to use encryption. That's a new function we implemented. This year I, I just passed this as a cube of 
in the fourth dimension, which I, I, I don't get to understand, but it's, it's related to the process of encryption of the, of the votes. What the encryption gives you is that uh, no one can know what, uh, what you voted, but with the code that it generates when you, when you issue your vote, that code allows you to verify that your vote has been counted properly, which is very, very important. So, so far we had uh, the authentication of users, so that we can know that all the, all the people that have voted are real people. And then we have the, now we have the encryption, which allows uh, people to vote secretly, and uh, it gives them also the chance to, to, uh, to check if their vote has been counted. That's a, that's a hackathon where, well, we, we mainly ate pizza, but they encouraged the other the other the other programmers to continue developing the tool. And this was the result of the second one with 2089 votes. 97% voted yes, and uh, he will analyze it also in this case why why maybe the results are so low because everyone will vote the same, so that uh, this encourages people to vote because uh, actually the. You are, if you are asking your basis, base of, of affiliates what to vote in a specific point where you know where your point of view is, then the result will be probably this clear. So, what was the question? In this case, uh, basically the, there was a new law in Spain that allowed the electric companies to come to your home and take your children. <laughs> <laughs> Now in Spain uh, we have a very big problem with the electric companies because then uh, we have an oligopoly. They privatized the, 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 the electric companies, but the, the electricity now is subsidized by the government so that we are paying extra money to the companies so that they don't charge us more and this law uh, allowed them to do that. So uh, every, everybody in Spain was in anger, but the, the governing party has majority, so that allowed them to do that. And uh, all the other parties voted very strongly against it. Except 46 people in the Green Party. Or probably not from the Green Party. But yes, that's an issue. Huh? When you request the people to vote, and you probably already know the answer. Uh, they, I, I think, my, uh, in my opinion, that it would be much better if you ask them something that is not so clear even between the, among the Green Party. And so this was the both. The both first, both big milestones in the project, and the next milestone I would say it's the primaries in the in the Spanish Pirate Party, no, in the Spanish Confederation of Pirate Parties, which is a very long story. That's me in the corner. And in this case, well, uh, we tried and very, uh, we implemented a new feature, which was the authorities. And authorities are uh, it's distributed the voting in different uh, instances in different servers, uh, so that uh, none of them controls the voting. They have to check the the data with each other, so that uh, as long as none of the authorities is compromised, then you can assure that the voting is uh, properly counted. It's uh, good measures against tampering, and in the case of the in the case of the fire of the Confederation of Pirate Parties. There was one authority in Madrid and there was another authority in, in Barcelona which belonged to pirate parties. It's not the best case scenario of authorities because they were both pirate uh, party of uh, authorities. But it gave certain reliance that uh, Barcelona people and Madrid people will not come together to tamper with the election. And besides, we are still a small community that wouldn't happen. But it gives you that assurance, and uh, actually we had problems with the counting of votes with, uh, of this, and the authorities uh, were good, were the, the guarantee that these uh, votes were properly counted because they could check what one authority did, and they could check what the first authority did. And this was the implementation we had in the, in the, in this, in the primaries of the pirate parties. Uh, again, a base of around uh, 1,500 uh, uh, affiliates who would get uh, through the email because they were already confirmed uh, users. They would get they would get an email saying you have already uh, you are an authenticated user. You can vote, and we used also those other two methods. 
of the of the this uh, certificate from the treasury and the uh, and the manual just scanning the the identification and sending it by mail. Yeah, they are not perfect, but they work. Uh, they work pretty well if you can control. If you can control the the, the process. So uh, this is what the this was the the primaries here were uh, two weeks ago. So this is very actual data. Uh, problem again: 200, 192 votes. Nine, 192 people voted, which uh, is worrying for us. But it does also follow a rule that only 10% of the affiliates usually vote, and that only 1% of voters would participate. So, for example, the, the basis from the pilot party is around that. It's about the god. Uh, I think like 50,000, 15,000 votes in Catalonia. So if you extrapolate, let's say you get 20,000 votes in Spain, and that makes it uh, exactly one percent of the people that voted in this election. Well, not exactly. Uh, you can use a reference. We are basing ourselves because after that comes acceptance. Because we were very worried. How come only 200 people have voted after all the effort? Uh, 25 candidates. If uh, if each candidate had called 10 people, we would have more. More people voting. I think we will analyze that in the case study based on the, the Valdivia project. But I think it's more of a political concern than a technical issue. Uh, but I think it's a very big issue. Uh, I just mentioned some reasons that could be affecting that. That the voting is not important because in this case, for the, oh, the, that we'll, we'll explain about it later. On. Yeah. So in this third case, we already have the authorities, and it makes already a tool quite complete. It has authentication. It has a, it has a verification through the authorities that allow us to control which uh, to the authorities to control each other. And then we will we'll talk about also the Bitcoin authorities that will be distributed. Then we will talk that in the next project. And yeah, which one? Was? Authentication, verification, and encryption yeah, that we got in our second boundary project. Well, uh, I've got this picture of Catalonia. I, I was going to talk to you about, to you about I don't know how we can make the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, next example of what's happening next with the tool is, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Catalonia and the independence of Catalonia. I will give you a very short story that would cause thousands of flames, but <laughs> the basic idea is that uh, it's illegal in Spain to organize a referendum. Only the central government can do that, and it only can be done with two thirds of the Spanish parliament. Which means that the two main left wing and right wing Spanish parties, Spanish is very polarized in that sense. Uh, right now, they have to get 80% of the, of the parliamentary seats. That's about to change, very probably, this, from now on, because people got really fed up <laughs> of this uh, two party system. But the thing is that if they don't agree to do anything, they no, no, you cannot organize any referendum of any kind. And none of them want Catalonia to have a referendum, so that's why it hasn't been organized this far. And the only time they agree, by, by the way, this is anecdotal, they never have agreed to, to change the constitution, for example, that would be required to do that. The only time they did it was uh, two years ago, when Angela Merkel came to Spain and said, uh, you have to change your constitution so that uh, you have to pay your debt before your national interests. And it worked. In a week, the constitu Spanish constitution was changed. <laughs> it's, it's said it's changed to, to balance. The, 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 the newspapers would always say it's changed to balance so you don't, have, uh, you don't spend more than, than your income. But in one of the little parts, it says before paying your anything, before paying your teachers, whatever, yeah. you have to pay debt. Debt, debt comes first. And that's now in the, in the Constitution. Yeah, yeah. Right. The Spanish Constitution says so we, we pay our debt. before the election. So, so that uh, Angela Merkel would be, <laughs> would be, be quiet about it. So, so if she's a powerful woman, or, uh, or the Deutsche Bank is a powerful bank, I don't know. <laughs> but this has been ongoing since Spain, Spain entered into democracy, uh, independentist movements have been there. And this, this year there was a huge threat, all the nationalistic parties said, we're going to do a consultation no matter what. This consultation will probably not happen because they, they, wouldn't, they won't allow it. 
uh, I don't know how, but we are very worried to could that happen. But parallel to that, a group of citizens decided, okay, well, what's the problem? We go to the streets and we ask the people. So they are organizing a citizen um, referendum. They are doing a, a crowdfunding for that. And uh, they are going to, they are going just to buy the ballots. And um, for that purpose, they are going to use Agora voting, which, uh, which was a bit surprising for us because they're doing it uh, on their own, but it was very satisfying to know that they were about the tool, it was working by itself, but people had uh, started using it. And another anecdote about that is that uh, they were requesting, I think, uh, something like 30,000 euros. They are going to spend 50,000 of those in ballots and boxes, and 2,000 euros, I think, in the web page. So uh, it was a bit there, okay. <laughs> well, I, I think you will understand what the feeling could be with that. But uh, yeah, this is the, the, the future, no? the tool that has been working and it, it offers the ability of, to empower citizens that, that we can say, okay, let's, let's vote, no? And okay, this is, um, this I want to talk to you about the future, no? This is, for example, um, uh, ONG of Design, uh, designed for us some logos and we voted which one was the favorite, the favorite logo is that one, I don't know. You agree or not? But uh, that, yes, I wanted to tell you about the, how the community is evolving. Uh, for example, we are working in, in many different lines. I, I work in communication. I carry the Facebook and the uh, Twitter, and uh, and uh, I try to contact people. And I'm here with you. Uh, but there are many other things. Like, for example, we had uh, someone did us a report about about accessibility. The the blind organization from Spain did a, did a 50 page report for us. So that the blind people and uh, and uh, the visually challenged people could vote, and uh, it was very harsh on us because we have many things to change, the, to make it uh, universal. No? Because that's one of the goals that you have to have. We have also some. We have another hundred pages report on usability, we, to make it work properly, so that to make it easier now for the user, user user friendlier. Those both are in the shelf, waiting that if we are able to do them uh, any other time. And, uh, and also the, the other issue is how to make it sustainable. About, because right now it's based on volunteering and it makes a lot of burden in the main programmers. Because as you know, a program is not just any programmer can get its handle on it and work with it, you have to have someone that has worked long with it, that makes it easier for him to work. 80% of the work, 90% of the work falls in the, into the same person, and um, it, that, that's, I think it's not sustainable in the long term, and so we have to either grow as a community or to get financial means for that, and we are looking at, the, uh, we are working in, in all the directions, no? Uh, for example, this crowdfunding is an example of the, of people uh, it's one way of uh, fin financing, where it goes for a special purpose. These things always go for a special purpose, no? So that it's always good to have a special event. We are going to do this voting, we need to implement these things in the tool, and then request money for that. Uh, an example of that is um, the, what I told you, these authorities. Right now you can create as many authorities as you want. You, you can use an independent institution to be an authority, so that uh, they can so they, they, they are neutral to your voting. And um, there's an idea we could use distributed authorities using the same system as Bitcoin. Which means that there would be thousands of authorities and that would be uh, almost impossible to, to crack or to tamper with. And for that purpose we also organized, uh, well it was more of a challenge that is uh, okay, if we gather 100 Bitcoins, we would do that. No, that's one way of looking for financing. And other ways are just uh, to be hired technically to, the, to do that. So if someone hires, okay, I, need, I want to do an implementation, how much would it cost? And everyone then, then works on their own, no? Then the programmer goes, okay, then I'll do it. I will charge you what I charge per hour, and uh, because uh, the, everything, and there's no copyright or anything. And, and that's it. I mean, the, those are the challenges we have. and. The, it's a small community, but I think we are doing fine, and we are very glad with it. And, um, and now we go with the case study, because we can uh, develop further what, uh, what can be improved in a voting. 
both technically and uh, politically. So now we are going to talk about the Valdivy project. Which is, yeah. and in the meantime, uh, do you have any questions about, um, about the program so far? Yeah, the, how, how do you, how does one get the authentication data from the treasury? I mean, how? how so it's a certificate, a digital certificate. And it's public available? Yes. Uh, the certificate, the you issue a certificate with the treasury, and uh, this is verified by the with, by the explorer, by explorer navigator, no, explorer navigator, browser. Browser. The browser authenticates this certificate, so it authenticates your identity. It's used uh, usually. Many people have it because you can pay taxes with it. But, but it costs, it's what about money? it costs money, yeah, right? To right. have this. Uh, uh, it costs money if you want to use it, use it for a lucrative purpose, I think. But otherwise, I think you can uh, just verify it. Yeah, there was another phase where you could, but just to verify if it is real one, uh, you can do it for free. I think then, the one, if you want to double check the identity, then you would have to pay to the treasury for that. And, and the privacy to people is it observed by the system? By the, it's a one way, or how does it? You, you you would know who is voted and not voted. You can know that. No. You cannot know the, the vote, what you voted. Oh, I see. You mean the, oh. prote the protection of the, uh, the data of the user? Uh, yes, also that. Yeah, so that's you, another aspect. You could know, you could know uh, who's voted and who's not voted. Yeah, yeah. That, that is also kept yes. unencrypted in the, in the server. Mm -hmm. But the vote itself is, is uh, encrypted. Okay. Yeah, so we had this big, 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 big discussion, or still have it within the Pirate Party in Germany to have a real, uh, uh, in Germany to have a real, um, we use liquid feedback as a mm -hmm. system for decisions. And uh, even though not voting for people, just voting for things, um, um, we have this argument, uh, the privacy of the user versus uh, giving a vote where you later can confirm that it uh, was... Our system, you, you can confirm mm -hmm. uh, the votes. Uh, anybody can look at the, at the confirming, mm -hmm. at the, for the confirmation, so you could check it. You could check this to past elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot know the votes, mm -hmm. what, what somebody voted, but you could know who voted and who didn't. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, yes. So, so, so it's like you JavaScript, JavaScript in, uh, in local that encrypts the vote uh, and sends it to, to the several uh, servers, to the several uh, authorities. And, uh, but I have to totally trust the system. Because you, I think we, you have the two things. You have the public votes where you can know what everyone has voted for. Mm -hmm. This is pretty easy to implement uh, technically because uh, you can also publish what everyone has voted for. Mm -hmm. So if you don't trust the system, you go <laughs> through the screens and count. And then see, okay, uh, that mat matches. But if you vote for people, you normally don't want to disclose what, the, what you have voted for, uh, for the voters. And um, in the classic pen and paper game, uh, you, if you have real, uh, really don't trust, uh, uh, you can go uh, and uh, open the boxes and start to recount the, the, the paperwork. But it's much more difficult to know if some bits slipped in, on your storage device in your memory is somewhere. So you, the only thing. Yes? Yeah, but maybe you have, I mean, with encryption or maybe error correction, I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Here, more or less, the system is you, you have your web browser, your JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, you validate the user, uh, you can also validate him with the uh, national identity card, mm -hmm. and you, you would not need um, to, to cross check it with, with another just to delete him from the list. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and the pod is encrypted and, and sent to several uh, servers, ah, okay. several authorities. And the authorities need each other to disencrypt the vote. Mm -hmm. Anyone can set up an authority. So before an election, you could say, hey, who wants to set up an authority? So if you don't trust the system or want to help the system be uh, more robust, you, you set up your, your server and you're an independent party. Okay, I see. And you get all the votes, you get all the <coughs> encrypted votes. And it's impossible to, to get to know both the, 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 the user's information as well as for or against. Those are, those are separate. 
I mean, I mean, at some point yeah. the votes have to be counted, and, and then that's disconnected from the user information. Yes, yes. And the user gets a ticket of his vote and can check his as his ticket was counted. He can. But check that's that part. That's part of the encrypted vote. Yes. yes. Okay. Anyone could set up a server, and all the servers are needed to decrypt. Is that yeah. Not all. Uh, some servers are needed to decrypt. That can be confirmed. I, I, I don't know the details. Yeah, the servers have, have to agree. Bitcoin lines. And the servers have to agree. Yeah, one is agree, then we have to check that. A few of them have to talk uh, with each other in order to disencrypt them. Mm -hmm. And all have all the data, all have the same information. Yeah. I think that's a very clever idea. Yeah, it's very clever idea. It's pretty much a simple idea. But yeah. it yeah. takes the argument away that uh, some irregularities take part. So uh, if someone can say, okay, I don't trust you, I put up a server. So, yeah. At yeah. the moment when the vote is given, how do you assure that the manipulation is t taking place already at that stage? Okay. The, the vote, um, yeah, if you, if you are lied to from the, from the, um, from the browser, um, and you're well lied to, you would get a false vote. So if somebody gets somebody else's digital certificate and generates uh, a vote... No, I mean, I'm identified as okay, but then I give a yes and the system counts a no. How can you avoid that? You give a yes, okay. okay. In this, in your encryption, you have your vote and a validation of of, uh, of that your vote is valid, so that you were correctly identified, but not your identity. Okay. So uh, you come in the box, and the, the system gener in, in the server generates a, a validation of, of of the voter that's encrypted, okay, and also your vote. Yeah. And that is sent away. That is sent away to all the servers. To all the different authorities. So there's no primary entry point. There is no central server for it, the vote. It's all of servers who get the same message. Yes. It, it would be like if, if you go to the voting place and when you leave the vote, you leave the vote and the vote goes to many places and it's encrypted and no only one of them can de encrypt the vote. And how can you said you, if there are differences between the different servers in results, how would you be able to verify that, or would if it just there, lead to annihilation? If uh, I don't know the details of how the transmission is done, if, if one server would not get the transmission, I, I don't I don't know if um, then that vote should be unvalidated or not. So that that is a uh, problem. I mean, yes, systems. Uh, in the communication part, could get broken, I guess. I, I don't know, I'm not uh, I'm an engineer, but uh, I don't know. But the protocol that is raised is documented in the research? Yes, it's yes, it's all open source, and yeah, yeah. Uh, it was both, uh, based on Elios for the encryption part. Uh, we, had, we actually managed to do something like that in Italy. Mm -hmm. Like there are uh, uh, like seven parliamentaries in Italy that are listening to a liquid feedback uh, kind of interaction. It's not a liquid feedback operated by the Tire Party. We just uh, help them set it up. It's run by the University of Milan. And liquid feedback is uh, is communicating with several. No, no, no. I mean, what I mean is the thing like that, uh, that you have on the, on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the members of parliament uh, giving away the vote, they don't really give it away, unfortunately, but they uh, listen to the, to the population by uh, having a feedback from the liquid feedback. Well, this was the first time ever in Spain. It was an experiment. And, uh, but so far, we're, the people do not believe it's true and they're not using it yet. Uh, the website. Tu Parlamento. Tu Parlamento. Yeah, and another perspective of this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, I've heard this from many, from, 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 from our part, uh, members who got uh, into the parliaments, that they don't see it as something, uh, okay, the people vote for something and I uh, must do it uh, although I don't like it. It's much more the other way around. I can 
as a, as a politician, I can back up my decisions yeah. uh, uh, with the people, uh, not this thing, what might be in the head for, in, for politicians who don't like it uh, uh, on the first view that uh, I'm not uh, no longer a free politician and I'm only the robot who uh, does what yeah. this crazy thing, what the people do, uh, uh, has to fill out. Uh, um, it's, it's a tool for the politician to ask uh, uh, if they are not sure and not yeah, the that's, system. That's quite new. I mean, that's something that is growing now. That's mm -hmm. why we are starting to think that it's in the Biden party and it's in many other parties. Uh, many green parties also mm -hmm. are getting this point of view. I think, I, I think it's um, new to the politics. Yeah. Because before that, the issue was trust me. Mm -hmm. And I will do what's right for you. No, that's what politics used to be. And now we are thinking about: okay, I will be representing you. So tell me what I have to do. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think we would agree, everyone, in that sense. And no? this is actually that's what every parliament parliament parliamentarian uh, normally does, because he's not in, the, in all fields. Uh, he, but he now they don't so much ask uh, his, his uh, or the people. He asks his own party or his own fraction in parliament. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the basic concept of, okay, here's something I don't know anything about, what do you mean? Uh, it's already there, but not for people. Well, in, in Spain, uh, for example, uh, it's a discussion we always have. Uh, in Spain, the parties have uh, internal laws that don't allow them to vote mm -hmm. uh, differently from the party. Uh, Although the constitution uh, says that uh, they are free to do whatever mm -hmm. they want, but they still have and practice. No, no, they, they have they written. They have fines. They, are written. Written. They, have, they have fines, internal fines from the party. When you don't follow the, the discipline, the vote discipline, then you get uh, less money for that or less money for the other thing. Whoa, you you okay. will always skip your seat because that is. It's not from the party, yeah. but if you're getting money from the party for something else, you might get it away. So this is crazy. Uh, we it's, have the same it's system. Crazy. Actually, it's, it's illegal, but nobody's gonna. Nobody took ever a party to the judges. Mm. No, nobody ever, never, ever. So that we always say that you can, it's almost liquid democracy already because why instead of having 180 people keeping the chairs warm. Mm -hmm. Then you have, okay, I'm, uh, I'm from the Popular Party and I represent 180 parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. And I'm from the Peser Party and I represent 140. That's what happens in, uh, in fact. Mm -hmm. but, but you have to have the, 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 you have to have the parliament full of people, that looks nice. Mm -hmm. so. so we, we had five minutes left, like two minutes ago. Um, <laughs> this, this part is not very important. It's, uh, so when this member of parliament came along, the important thing is that uh, this, this software was born in a little party of uh, 30 people through the internet. Uh, we met like twice in, in all the years. Um, Luis came along later once this project was, uh, the software project was made independent. Uh, he showed up and said, I want to dedicate my next year to running this and I'm making it further. And the, the fact that the, the, the software and the project was not related to our party, to I, I was more always uh, related to the party, to the Partido de Internet, Internet Party, um, it was great because it allowed uh, the people from this project, uh, Eduardo Robles, which is uh, Edulix, Edulix, uh, Edulix um, to talk to many other parties. Mm -hmm. The Pirate Party used it also. Mm -hmm. uh, Pirate Party in Spain is uh, very small. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and well, once this other guy, this other guy is from the left, uh, social com compromise and equal, he, he, he took this and well, we, we appeared in the, in the Guardian, or this vote appeared in the Guardian. I didn't appear, it was another project, so, and it runs along. And uh, Spanish so, um, news, we so your, time, your time is actually up. up. So okay. it's, it's the next talk already have started here. So okay. let you know. Thanks a lot. So what are we talking about now? <laughs> How elections have no link with democracy. Sorry? Elections have no link with democracy. No, it's good. <laughs> then we can, we can run with that. Um, no, no, the whistleblowing is over there. Well, I'm sure. not speaking. Yeah, I guess so. So, okay. I see. <laughs> <laughs> this is strong number two. Yeah, it's possible for one. Oh, oh, sorry, your whistleblowing is here. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Whistleblowing is here. The elections is another problem. Okay. The elections is another So, okay. yeah, the Guido, Guido Stark is here. Yeah, okay. Sorry, so I'm, I'm sorry. I was confused. Um, limitations. We only had one seat of 350. Most people were not aware they could vote. A uh, voter needs a card, uh, a card reader, so you, you also have this card here, hardly nobody uh, 
use their cards, but uh, most were already registered because they this party had their names already on their DNA. DNA. Um, and we depend on the goodwill of a parliamentary at the moment. Uh, okay, uh, this, the, the strength is an independent project, uh, official ID voting, so we are as, 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 as sure as, as uh, official elections. Um, for sovereign international, the results um, in the first vote, only 80% rejected the transparency law, which was voted. We didn't speak about what law was, but it doesn't really matter now. And, and yeah, Congress passed the law, although 80% of our voters, of course, our voters are not, are not, uh, our voters are not really the population, are just 2,000 voters that mostly came from this party, so. Um, and the second one, they divided in four parts, the law, and, and yeah, 90% of voters said no. It, it appeared yes because the yes was rejecting the vote, but less media coverage, and, and, but we have lots of more projects coming along, so yeah, that's it. And criticism, and no physical deployment, I would say this is the most important thing. We didn't go to the streets, we just lived there, and yeah. And yeah, and uh, you can join us in the, in the last uh, uh, email there. And if you use write, write Agra voting, it's easy to communicate. Uh, Eduardo is the one who's doing it. And if anyone wants to, to do a collaboration or talk later, or has any ideas to, for me, it would be very important to join the physical part with the, with the digital part, or to make a tool that organizes randomly voting booths in the streets. Uh, something like that would be great. Uh, I guess the German or oh, we're, we're from any part parties. But yeah, if you, if you go a little bit out of the box of the part of the party and you go you think more about the general population, the ability to organ self-organize votings, uh, citizen votings, uh, it's a very important direction. And that's it. Would you mind me 